Amen. Welcome. You may be seated. Glad you're here today on, uh, boy, what a big day yesterday. If you didn't know, the Finding Illini picked up a big win, you know, and it's not often that we get to say that, but boy, they really came through. So that that's, uh, I'm excited for that. And I'll tell you, I'm excited for that, not just because, you know, uh, winning is better than losing, but we know uh, that a lot of the U of I football players, Jason is reaching out to them as the chaplain, and uh, most of the backfield are saved and coming to Bible studies. Uh, there's 60 players that come to Bible study every Tuesday night. So, you know, and, uh, and it's just good because you just feel like, um, you know, in this Christian life, the good guys don't always win, right? We don't always get to win, but we're, we're, we have victory in Jesus. But you just feel good when sort of somebody who's living right, kids who are trying to live right, um, sort of have a moment of joy and you rejoice with them. So I, I'm really glad for them for that. So um, good to be here today. We got, there's always lots of stuff going on. Uh, here at Weber and they're all in your program. I want to highlight one thing that's coming up this Wednesday morning is our senior day at Little Galilee Camp. And uh, Johnny B. Good over here is driving the church van. I call him Johnny B. Good. Uh, and he'll be driving. And we're leaving at 7.15 from the church parking lot. If you want to ride in the church van, uh, you don't have to have already paid. All you have to do is sign up today with John. Let him know you want to ride. I'll get you registered. I'll call your number into the camp, and you can just pay the camp. I think it's, what is it, $15 or $18 or something like that. Um, but if you don't have the money, show up anyway. Uh, somebody, you know, Bud will pay for you, right? So don't worry about it. So we'll get you. But it's this, this Wednesday, it's, uh, we're leaving at 7.15. We'll be back about 3, 3.30, and it's just a great day of preaching and music and fun. And will be about 150 seniors there at the camp. Uh, Bob Phillips is going to share a little bit. He's been working with the camp. And Bob's been in ministry for over 40, 50 years, I think. And he's going to share a little bit. So it's a really good day. If you want more information, uh, talk to uh, me afterwards or let John know for sure you want to ride in the van. And that'd be great. Um, all right, I like to start with something a little bit funny. So there were these boys that were all sitting around. You know how young boys are? They're always bragging about their dads, right? So one little boy says, well, well my dad... Uh, he's so great. He writes a few words on a piece of paper and he calls it a poem and people give him $50. And the other boy said, well, that's nothing. My dad writes words down to a song on a piece of paper and he calls it a song and they give him $100 for that. The third boy said, I got you all beat. My dad writes down some words on a piece of paper and he calls it a sermon and it takes eight people to collect all the money. <laughs> So anyway, all right. Well, are you ready today? Let's pray. I'm excited about today. Are you? Yes. All right. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful to be here today. Uh, anytime we have a chance in life where we're breathing and we're able to open your word and um, open our hearts and minds and be open to your will, God, challenge us today, encourage us, um, just lift us up and change us so that the person who walks out those doors today is different than the person who walks in. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. My message today is called, It's All Good. Everybody repeat that. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, we can do better than that. That, that. that was all okay, but it's all good. Ready? One, two, three. It's all good. Oh, it is all good, isn't it? Amen. Why is it all good? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. There's a lot of good things in life, right? Amen. I'm going to share a few of the good things for me in my life, right? And you're like, how about custard cup? Huh? Oh, you, yeah, you got to love that. And custard cup. I like the lemon custard with the cold fudge on top, the chocolate cold fudge. And then they put a little malt on it. And that's called a, it's called a cold fudge dusty. They put a little malt on it. And boy, I'm telling you, it's like, it's like a little spoon of heaven, you know. You did, your eyes roll back in your head. You know, you're just like, oh, man, that's good. Okay, how about this? Pizza from, okay. Okay, I like lots of pizza. I like, uh, I like okay, Monocles. you got to love Monocles, right? You like Monocles, But, you know, I like the Old Orchard Bowling Alley pizza. You, how many of you have had that? That is really good. My wife said to me a few years ago, hey, I've heard that the best pizza in town is the Old Orchard Bowling Alley. I go, Bowling Alley? Bowling Alley? I've never heard of the Bowling Alley having, like, great pizza. But I was wrong. They got good pizza. So that, that's a good thing that I think is all good there. How about a hole-in-one in golf? I play a lot of golf. And I've been lucky enough, lucky enough to have three of them. Isn't that something? 
Crazy, huh? I'm, I'm, not, I'm a lucky guy. You hang out with me, you know? A little bit of luck will rub off. How about this? I have my favorite dessert, just in case you want to know. I don't know what you'd want, but just in case you want. My favorite dessert is, it's whatever it is, there's strawberries on top, the kind of frozen strawberries on top, and then you have like cream cheese and then pretzel pretzel crust underneath. You know what I'm talking about? You know what? Strawberry delight. Oh! I make like that. <laughs> Johnny Be Good is so good. Johnny, it's all good. Strawberry delight. If you haven't had it, talk to Johnny today and say, please make me some strawberry delight. It is really good. But the, the topper for, for everyone, and then I've got one, I've got one stashed away. I've got I've got cans of these stashed all over the church. Diet Mountain Dew. I'm telling you, it's the sweet elixir of kings and queens. It is wonderful. That's bad, isn't it? Everyone looks at me like, like you shouldn't be drinking that. I know. It's my one, it's my one vice. But it's all good. When someone does something wrong to you and you forgive them, you say what? It's all good. It's all good. Now say that with a little attitude. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry about it, right? After God finished creation, Genesis 1.31, uh, He didn't quite say it like that, but it kind of meant the same thing. God looked at everything He had created, the Bible said. He looked at everything and He said, It's, it's, all, good. it's all good. That's what He said. If it was the 70s, He would have said, Dynamite! <laughs> Do you remember? We remember that. Some people in here are like, what are you guys talking about? Remember that? Dynamite! Or your favorite cartoon, Yabba Dabba Doo! <laughs> Flintstones, right? I'm really showing my age. Or how about this? If you're back in the 90s, you go, whoop, whoop, raise the roof, whoop, whoop. Right? My daughter's 26, and one time we were doing something. Uh, we were at a, at a wedding or something, and I was out there kind of dancing. I was not really dancing. I'm just kind of like... And, and I, was, I went, hey, like she goes, Dad, don't do that. That's not in anymore. I go, that's not in? When did that go out? She goes, it went out in 95. <laughs> I go, Someone's got to let me know these things. I, I'm an old man. I don't know this kind of stuff, but it's all good. So what is so good in our life? I think every, especially this time of year in Illinois, fall is really a beautiful time, isn't it? Uh, I recently did a funeral, and a lot of folks came from California. And they came back here to Illinois. And they, they think in California, people in California think about Illinois for the cold winters and the hot, humid, buggy summers. But they came back and it was, it was the last couple days have just been beautiful. I mean, the sun was shining, the leaves are turning. And they said, I forgot how beautiful the fall is in the Midwest, in Illinois. And it is. And God's creation shows us a lot of his glory. And it's all good. Creation shows us His glory. Psalms 19.1 says this. The heavens declare. Heavens meaning everything God created. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the skies proclaim the work of His hands. And that word glory is kind of a funny word. Like, What does it really mean? The word glory uh, literally means character. Your glory is your character. It's it's who you are, what you say, what you do, what you act like. That's your glory. What is your glory like? What, what kind of glory do people see over you? So the Bible says that the heavens, all of creation declares God's glory. Creation declares God's character. We can look at creation. We can look at everything. Uh, everything He's made. Between human beings and all of us and trees and mountains. And when we see all that... And we think, wow, that is amazingly awesome. And it just shows the glory of God. It shows the character of God. We, we get to know God a little bit more through all His creation, don't we? If you were a great painter, I could look at your paintings and I could know a lot about you by the things you painted. Maybe you paint log cabins a lot. You paint mountains and trees. And everything you paint is all nature, maybe out with mountain streams. Then I can kind of tell. You must really like hiking and you must like being in the outdoors or that must be something beautiful to you. Your paintings declare sort of who you are. It tells a lot about you. In the same way, everything we see that God created, it sort of tells us a lot about Him tells us a lot about who He is, who His image is. The Bible says we're made in God's image. We're made in His glory. We're made in His character. We're a lot like Him, aren't we? And so our glory, our character is a lot like God. There's nothing more proud than when a parent, when someone says to a parent, man, your kids are just like you. They look like you. And you think, 
Well, thank, that's awesome because you feel, you feel good. Hey, that's my glory. I'm passing who I am on. Hopefully it's the good stuff, right? I'm passing on who I am to another generation. And for a parent, it kind of makes you proud. To a kid, they're embarrassed like, oh, for Pete's sakes. I'm like my parent. But to us, we're like, oh, I did a good job, right? It's our glory to pass it on. In the same way, when somebody says, you, you act a lot like Jesus. You're a lot like the Lord. We think, thank you. And that's God's glory to think he's passed that on to us. He's so proud to know that we're like him, that his image is stamped on us. The Bible says in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. We're made in his glory. We're a gift from God brought down upon us. When we see the stars and we see the planets, we see his character. When we see a baby born, it's really impossible, I think, to see the, the miracle of life and to not know that there is a God in the, in the universe. There is some God that, that, that made a human being to be born inside a mother's womb. And you think that is a miracle of life that that happens. When we see that, we see God's glory. We see his complexity. We see all of his handiwork. We can't see creation without thinking there is an intelligent Creator who made all of that possible. Who made all of it, and it's all good. God's signature, His glory, His character is seen in all creation. His thumbprint. Your thumbprint is who you are. Everybody here has a thumbprint. And it can, be, it can identify you, right? That's why robbers, when they do something bad, they wear gloves, right? Why? Because they don't want their thumbprint to be seen. Because their thumbprint shows who they are. It's your character. It's your glory. God's thumbprint is in the comfort of the hug of a friend. When we get a hug from a friend, when we have that friendship, we see God's character. His mark is seen in the wise counsel of a friend or a pastor. His signature that he writes is written across all of the universe, isn't it? And his stamp was his son on the cross. It brings us back home to him. That showed us God's character, his glory, that he's a loving forgiving, surrendering God that's willing to give up himself for you. That's who God is. So we see God through creation. We see him through, through our friends, through each and every one of us. At, at CU Church, they always have a time uh, for people to, to get up and say, how I connect with God. Maybe you've seen that on a Thursday night. And I've always thought, what would I say if they asked me to get up and say, how do I connect with God? And, I, and every time I think about it, and there's lots of different things. There's no really wrong answer. But every time I think about it, I think, I think I would probably say how I connect with God is through you. Because when I interact with you and I see your faith and I see your joy and I see you go through hard times and I see your courage, you know what? It reminds me and it, I, I recognize God in you. I connect with God so many times through you. Because you're right here. I can touch you. I can feel you. I can hug you. I can be next to you. I can laugh with you and cry with you. And I can pray with you. And I connect with God through you. We're not perfect. But we have His image in us. His DNA flows through our spiritual heart, doesn't it? We're a lot like our Father God. Because He's our Daddy. And we were created from Him. Do we always make Him proud? Not always. But as Amy Grant used to sing back in the 70s, right? I've got my father's eyes. There's something about you and I that's like our creator God. And he loves us so much for that. God has left his mark on us, engraved by his love. He's, we're made in his image. He was the original owner of us. Maybe we've given ourselves away some other times, but we always have one original owner. We always have one who really, really owns us. He has the title deed to your heart, to your soul. Remember that. God always has the title deed to your heart. And you can give that back to Him. So we turn our hearts back to Him. The Bible says in Isaiah 49, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. We're engraved on His hands. So it's all good that through creation, we see God's glory. Through everything we see, everything He's made, we see the image and we see the character of God. And that includes you and I. Second of all, it's all good because... Through creation, it displays God's power. You can't look at creation. You can't look at what God has made and not think of the word power. Think of fast cars, powerful jet engines, huge rockets, 
intense laser beams, right? Now surgeries now are being done with lasers and all kinds of technology. Who gave all those doctors, who gave all those scientists that wisdom? Where did that wisdom come from? It came from him. Micro megabyte calculations of your cell phone. They tell me that the cell phone that you have right now in your pocket, the technology in that phone is more powerful than the technology that sent the Apollo 11 and Apollo 13 men to the moon. You have more power in your pocket right now that you went down to Verizon and bought than all the technology they had back in 1969. Isn't that crazy? But that's just how much power we have nowadays, how much of that. And it all comes from the knowledge that God has given to us to use for His glory. All forms of power. Huge mountains carved out by streams of water. You think of that. If you go, go out somewhere, go out west, and you see these giant snow-capped mountains, and you see the Grand Canyon, and you go other places. And on my TV on cable, if I pause a movie or something or TV for a while, does your TV do this, and all of a sudden, beautiful pictures come up on the screen. It just flashes from picture to picture. And below, and they're beautiful mountains, and all over the world, and just crazy, beautiful, intense things that you're like, I've never seen something like that. And they're from all over Germany and Switzerland and Mexico and everywhere. And they're so beautiful. And when I look at those, I think, I want to be there. That's so beautiful. And then I just think, when I look at those, I think, God, you created that. You are a master artist. You, you did all that. And it took so much power for those mountains to be formed. It took so much power for you to create the universe, to put the stars in place. And they're thousands of light years away. But yet, you hold the entire universe farther than we can even see in your hands. God, you are such a powerful God. Beyond what I could ever even imagine. I can't even write down the words of your power. I can't even put the calculations with enough zeros behind how powerful you are from all that you've done, all that's in life, all that you've created. I love the song, So Will I, by Hillsong. And I just want to read a few of the words to the song. And it's a beautiful song. It's called So Will I. Uh, find it somewhere and listen to it. And, and it's really a blessing. It says like this, God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, you spoke to the dark and you fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures, they catch your breath. Every painted sky obeying what you said. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed a work of art called love. And I can see your heart eight billion different ways. Every precious one, a child, you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, then so will I. Creation was a display case for God's power. <clears throat> Creation was God's Super Bowl. Creation was his home run derby, his all-star game, his Indianapolis 500. God said, let me just see if I put all my power, what I can do. And he rubbed his hands together and he said, let there be light. And it began. And everything we see is from our father. And he's not just this awesome, amazing creator of the universe who holds it all together. He's also your tender father, your Abba, Abba, Daddy. He's your Daddy Father. He's that close to you. Genesis 1.31, God stepped back and he looked at all that he had created. He looked at us. He looked at you. And he said, it's all good. I think he would have said today, he would have said, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy now? Look what I've done. Like a painter and he's done with this, perfect, with this masterpiece. He steps back and goes, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look what I've done. Look what I've made. And he said, and it's all good. Always remember you are all good. You are all good. When he made you, he said, it is good. You're a beautiful person. You're a beautiful creation and you're made in God's image. And you have your father's image and he's going to draw you back home to him. Because he knows you. He created you. There was this little nine-year-old Joey was asked by his mother, what did you learn in Sunday school today? 
His mom said, Well, Mom, our teacher told us how God sent Moses behind enemy lines on a rescue mission to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Then he got to the Red Sea and he had his engineers build a bridge and all the people walked over and then he used his walkie-talkie to radio headquarters for reinforcements and they sent bombers to blow up the bridge and all the Israelites were saved. Now, Joey, his mother said, is that really the way your teacher told you that story? Billy said, well, no, Mom, it's not. But if I told you the way it really happened, you'd never believe it. <laughs> Sometimes in God's creation, it's almost what? It's almost unbelievable. When we see the majesty of Him, when we see the complexity of our bodies, even, even today with all of our technology, they still can't recreate the human body. There's things in your body that only God, knitting you together in your mother's womb, without her doing a thing, taking nine months and this complex human being with a soul and a spirit was created. That's the complexity, that's the power, the unbelievable power of God that we see and it's all good. So we see creation and creation displays God's glory. His character, his image, his power, it looks like him, it reflects him. We see his power, the work of his hand. And in all of God's creation, lastly, it displays his wisdom. It displays that our God, our Father, right? Our dad is smarter than any other dads in the neighborhood. Our dad is a wise, wise God. Wisdom looks like this parable. Have you ever heard this? Never criticize or make fun of a person until you've walked a mile in their shoes. You know why? That way, when you do, you'll be a mile away from them and you'll have their shoes. <laughs> well, God's wisdom is a little bit better than that, isn't it? It's always been His plan to redeem fallen man. It's always been God's plan to send Jesus to die for us. In God's wisdom, at the beginning of time, when He said, let there be light, He already had a plan to redeem the very people that he would create, that he knew would fall, that would have a sinful nature. And God already set into motion the plan to have his own son, Jesus, step out of heaven, come down to the earth, be born of the Virgin Mary, of Joseph, in a stable, in a little bitty town called Bethlehem, and live this humble life so that he could die in a humble way upon the cross. That he would also build the church with 12 men that would start it. 12 men like us, not perfect guys, but who knew their father's heart and wanted to obey what God had said. And it's always been his plan to redeem you and I through the church, the people of God. And the church looks like it's different. It looks different every, everywhere you go. But it's people of God, you and I, who call Jesus Lord. We believe that Jesus died on that cross for our sins. And we... With that passion inside of us, the love of our Father, seeing His image, um, realizing and experiencing His power, and seeing His wisdom, that God's wisdom was that all creation, everything has gone according to God's plan. Sometimes it seems a little bit out of control, doesn't it? Sometimes it seems like, God, are you still in charge? This is a really wacky world. There's wars all over the place, and the political uh, mess that we're in and everything. God, are you still in charge? Yes. Yes. It's all under God's control. It's not out from his control. It's never been by chance. Life's never been a roll of the dice, a roll that will, a lottery ticket, or a weather forecast. God is the sure thing. In the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness of time, he died on the cross. In the fullness of time, the church was born. In the fullness of time, God has raised up leadership in church and church people like you and I to go out into the world and be salt and light to people who are lost and broken. As the band comes up, as we conclude today, God has always had a plan. And he has one for you too. The Bible says this in Jeremiah 29. I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. Plans of peace and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for you. And it's a good one. The Bible says that his plans for you go beyond what we could ever hope or imagine. Whatever we can dream. And I, I could have some pretty big dreams. I can imagine some pretty big things. But he, the Bible says his plans for you are even better than, than what you could ever hope or imagine. 
It's all good. Through creation, we see God's glory. It's all good because through creation, it displays his power. It's all good because through creation, it maps out his wisdom. And it's right in front of us, and it's all good. God of creation, God of my heart, and God of my salvation. Lord, I see your glory, I see your power, I see your wisdom, and all that you've made in me and in my life. And I praise you for it. God, help me to display your glory. Help me to display your image as I leave this place. Help me to display your power, power to save. Help me to display your wisdom, God, that you are in control of all of our lives as I share with people and through their ups and downs of their life to be able to share with them, God is a God of glory and power and wisdom. And God, it's all good because you are my God and you're in control. And we pray this, Lord, and we're so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen.